tried to send them back to RI and they said no. Well, they're pretty cute. They can send the pins, but not the crystal. Yeah. So, they have so that sounds in. good, Barb. That's how I would do it. And then uh, when I start, when I'm done speaking, then um, you can bring the mustins up and then Pete up, I guess. Uh, yeah, can, if they speak, they will come up automatically. Yeah. So, but yeah. You, you can kind of tell them to take over and, and give you give their responses. Okay. They're I'll tell them that. Responses. And then once they're done speaking, I'll come back on, kind of wrap it up and just, just okay. sounds good. congratulations and then and we'll go from there. Great. Okay, so I've hit record. So if you'd like to go into the chat box, you can enter your name. So Chet, you want me to walk you through that again? Go ahead. Okay, you see at the bottom, do you see a button that says chat on your screen? Um, I'm in the middle, probably. Um, no. Yeah, move yeah. your cursor down uh, below the pictures. I, I, I know where the, I, I got to share, I got to, yep. I got to leave. Yep, don't, more. don't do share. Huh? Don't leave. <laughs> you know, if you want to chat, I'm just going to put your name in. You're good. Oh, you, you can do just it, forget please. it. I will take care of you. So I know you will. I try. Try my hardest. Well, it looks like my team is all here. There's Mr. Colin Colner. Hello. Hi there, Bill. Good to see you. Nice to see Bird. you. Great day outside. Oh, it's beautiful. I walk every morning about and about six o'clock. It was just terrific. I, did, I mean, there wasn't a leaf churning or anything. It was really beautiful. Well, when we moved here five years ago, people kept asking us, why did you move to Iowa? And I'd say, for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> good for you and the good people. Yeah. It, they are good people here. I got a lot of good Iowa people uh, stories. Oh, good. Yeah. Good to see you, Chet. Right. Well, thank you, Bill. Hi, Dr. Pete. Well, hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? How are things in Jefferson? Good. Good. It's great to see you. Well, th Thank you. I haven't had a woman tell me that in 25 years. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe that. Oh, um, no, it's true. It, it, it's worth a fine, right? Hey, did did you did you go to Iowa Mo's this year? No. I think it was canceled, wasn't it? We didn't have it this year. Okay. I we canceled we both Ecotopec and Iowa Most, and, and I've retired from Iowa Most. Okay. I thought I had heard that they slipped Iowa most in, but no. I do have. I don't know if you can rewatch back. I know. <laughs> I bought one of those too. <laughs> Whatever. Pete, who who I can't remember who stepped in for you. Uh, Tom Novak. That's what I thought. I was going to say Tom. I couldn't remember it was Tom. And then we have Liz Loeb helping us over on UFA Change. Yeah, and then there's a. Uh, a PNP or a, P, a PA, I guess, who's uh, native Colombian or native, anyway, she's the other uh, so-called medical pediatric okay. person with Tom. <clears throat> you taking care of your kids, Pete? Pardon? Are you taking care of those kids? Oh. Hi, Tim Walsh. So just a reminder to everybody, I'm recording the meeting already. So all of your banter we've got for posterity. So um, if you'd like to, please go into the chat and enter your names for our attendance. Barb, this is Jim. Am I coming through? You are coming through. All right. Thank you very much. Barb, enter me in there. We have, I can't find it on my buttons here. You can't find what? I can't find a chat button. Uh, well, it should be along the bottom of your screen. Are you yeah. looking at your keyboard or are you looking have, at your screen? I have a mute, yep. stop video, participants, 
share screen, and more. Okay, it's probably under more. Well, let me click on that. Then it says record on the computer. Okay, don't do that. No. That's all I got there. Okay, well, it's all right. I've got your attendance down, so don't worry about it. You okay. can just sit back and I can mute your microphone and uh, you can just enjoy chat. All right, I'm here. Okay, deal. Hi, Bernie. Hello. Who said that? That's Chris Knapp. How is the biking? Hi, Hi Chris. <laughs> biking is great. Good. Uh, I'll be out uh, at 1.30. <laughs> <laughs> We'll make sure we end the meeting on time for you. So yeah, you get okay. into your, into, into your um, <laughs> lycra. <laughs> uh, a uh, big wedding anniversary today. Oh, yeah? What number? 54. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. Yeah, Miss, Mrs. Kramer has been very tolerant over the years. Uh, yes, she has. <laughs> <laughs> I call her Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're on a first name basis, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Chat screen. All right, now type in your name. Hi, Ed. Hey, how you doing? Fine. I'll tell Andrew that I saw you. Oh, excellent. Yeah, actually, uh, Tom and uh, little Eddie Cranston are visiting. So. Yep. Good, okay. Hello, yeah, they've been quarantined and we have been, and so <laughs> we feel pretty safe to get together. Yeah. So I'm a Yo. member of. Uh... Yeah, do give him my regards. Will do. Our Thomas um, is back from his assignment in North Carolina, and he was quarantined with us for 14 days, and now he's um, being social. Oh, good. good. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know if that's good, but. Hi, Mustins. Hi. Oh. Hi, Ray and Linda. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Welcome, everybody. Great to see you today. Just a reminder to go out to the chat button and enter your name so that we have your attendance. Appreciate Barb, that. Barb, did my sign in come through? It did, Bernie. You're in. Thank you. Hey, Bernie, we got. Time for a good story. We haven't heard one from you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to tell them. Well, you know, I have to watch politically correct and all that now. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're amongst friends here. Yeah, I know, but I I have to be careful about Lena and Ole, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, you sure you don't have some great story about, you know, your, what did you say? 54 years? 54, yes. 54 years of marriage. Today is today the day? Well, I did propose to her again this morning and asked if she wanted to re-up for another year, and she agreed. So that was positive. Okay. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Good move. Uh, Especially yeah. in moderation, as we're doing. Um, where did you go for your honeymoon, Bernie? Uh, we went, we drove, believe it or not, to Montreal and then headed uh, into upstate New York, which is, of course, absolutely beautiful. We had a wonderful honeymoon. <clears throat> In Niagara Falls? Uh, yes, we did. In New York did you go, Bernie? Say that again. Where in New York? <clears throat> well, just the uh, upstate New York, you know, just drove through that area. Buffalo, uh, Rochester, the Finger Lakes? Yeah, uh, not the Finger Lakes, no. Okay. Uh, way north, you know, entering oh, okay. from Canada. okay, Watertown and that area, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's my stomping grounds. Oh, okay. Where exactly, uh, Chris? Ithaca. Okay, I was born in Auburn, so. And and and, and um, Rochester, uh, my where my grandparents were. Yeah. Now see, now I grew up near Erie, Drury Erie, the mistake on the lake, they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Cle that's Cleveland. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Cleveland's a suburb of Erie. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> And Chris, do you know where Horseheads is? You my bet. That's where my oh, absolutely. I lived. My in father, Corning. my father was born in Erin, which is right next to um, Horseheads. I lived in Corning for about uh, eight years. Ben Glass. Yep. I actually I was in Painted Post, but 
Okay. Nobody knows where that is, but they know where Corning is. Well, I'm from this little teeny town called Northeast Pennsylvania in the northwestern part of Pennsylvania. It's on that little chimney, if you will. It's the last town before you hit before you hit New York on 90. Yep. So all those great vineyards. Yep. So my high school team, the Northeast High School Grape Pickers. Oh, wow. That, that's, our, that, that's, wow. A Welch's, that's a Welch's grape area there. Well, yeah, I'm, a wine, grape. I'm a wino, so I appreciate that. I like the Everly cattle feeders. Oh, that's a good one. So welcome, everybody. Just a reminder to please go into the chat box, enter your name for your attendance. If you're a visiting Rotarian, let us know where you're from. And if you're a guest, please let us know who you are a guest of. I see Steve West, had two. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Lynette. Hi. Barb, I see it's 12.02. Is it okay with you if we get started in about one or two minutes? You bet. Absolutely. All right. See, the numbers are climbing here, so we'll give people a minute or two to get logged on, and then we'll begin. So just a reminder that people may want to go out and mute your microphone, and if not, I'm going to do it for you. So... <laughs> Looks like we've got a good crowd. We're at about 57 right now. So just remember everybody, go into the chat box and enter your name for your attendance. Okay, well, I see it's 12.04. Barb, if it's okay with you and everyone, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, as we do with all of our meetings, we begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you are able, please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, well, welcome everyone. And uh, excited to see so many uh, Rotarians on here, both the Iowa City Noon Rotary and some uh, visiting Rotarians. My name is Jim Connard. I'm uh, this year's club president. Uh, today actually marks the conclusion of my tenure as uh, president of this club. So it's with uh, mixed emotions that we begin the meeting today, but uh, very excited about today's meeting. and. And, uh, recapping a few of our highlights and uh, having the opportunity to pass the gavel to our president-elect Barb Thomas. So it should be a fun meeting today. I'm glad everyone has joined us. Uh, with uh, that, how about um, Barb, why don't you start us off with uh, some tips on our Zoom meetings. Any Zoom tips for our group? Sure. Uh, as you've all heard, you know to go to the chat box and enter your name for your attendance. But given that we have a lot of people here, what you might wanna do is go into the upper right corner if you're on a computer and switch from gallery view to speaker view. If you go to speaker view, you'll actually see a larger image of the speaker. Um, but if you wanna see all the pictures of everyone, then you can choose gallery view. Again, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a number of buttons. There is a participants button and that does open up a box where you can choose a button that says raise hand. And so when we have introductions or announcements, that's what you would use to raise your hand for your question or your announcement. However, if you have trouble with that, feel free to write in the chat box and I'll try to get back to that and call on you. Okay, I think that's it, back to you, Jim. Okay, thank you, Barb, appreciate that. Uh, great job with these Zoom meetings. Uh, next, if you are a guest today, 
or if you are a visiting Rotarian from another club, uh, we'd like you to click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And uh, Barb will call on uh, you either as a guest or a visiting Rotarian. And when she does, just please say your name and uh, which club uh, you're representing, or if you're a guest, who you're a guest of. So again, uh, please click on the raise hand button. Barb, I'll turn it back to you to recognize uh, folks with, uh, who have their hands raised. Sure, we're gonna start with Jackie Andrew. Jackie, you could unmute and... I'm Jackie Andrew. I'm from the Rotary Club of Jefferson, Iowa. I'm past district governor of District 6000 in 1314. And I'm here in a role as um, fundraising chair for the district foundation. Wonderful. Jackie, thanks for joining us and hope you enjoy our meeting today. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you. In addition, we have Chris Knapp here with us today. Hi, folks. Um, this is Chris Knapp. I'm happy to be back here um, with your club. I was district governor in 1617. I'm here in the role of your district 6000 foundation chair today. Wonderful. Chris, thanks for uh, being with us and we appreciate all you do uh, for uh, our district and we we'll look forward to hearing from you as well. And I believe we do have a few other visiting Rotarians. Janet Lamberson. Janet, would you like to unmute your microphone and introduce yourself to our members? I did. Yep, I did. I'm Janet Lambertson from Iowa Falls, Iowa Falls Rotary, uh, District 5970. And I am the incoming president at the Iowa Falls Rotary Club. We'll start uh, next week, I guess it is. And don't know if we're going to do physical meetings or Zoom, but I'm here to see how a good Zoom meeting goes. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> you bet. Great. Wonderful. Thanks, Janet, for being here. And we hope you get to witness a good Zoom meeting today. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> In addition, we have another visiting Rotarian. I know who is here, Bill Colner. Bill, would you like to unmute your microphone and say hello? Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Bill Kohler from the Rotary Club of West Liberty. I'm, uh, like Barbara, incoming president to uh, uh, my Rotary Club. This will be my third term. Uh, it's kind of like Groundhog Day. And uh, I'm here today as the annual funds uh, chair for the district and a special opportunity to share with others. Great, Bill. Nice to see you. I got to sit by you at a foundation event back in November. Nice to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So I think that is all of our guests or visiting Rotarians. Just one reminder to everyone, please go out to the chat box and enter your name for your attendance. And then I'll send it back to you, Jim. Wonderful. Thank you, Barb. I appreciate that. Welcome to all of our guests and visiting Rotarians. Uh, as our club members can gather by uh, the group of uh, distinguished Rotarians that we have joining us today, we do have a special presentation today. And uh, uh, it's regarding the foundation. I'd like to turn the meeting over to Vern Folkman to uh, begin our special presentation. Vern? Thank you, Jim. Am I coming in all right? Yes, you are. Thank you, Vern. Good. Um, well, thanks, President Jim, for uh, letting me do this. And it's, it's quite an honor for me to be able to present uh, some awards today. And or I'm going to actually lead it. And then somebody else will be presenting, but I'll introduce them in a minute. But I, first of all, I want to congratulate you, Jim, for a really nice job you did this uh, year as our president. Uh, you led this club really well, and we got a lot of things done successfully. And so uh, it's nice. And I know you're really happy to, to relieve yourself of these duties because I've been, I've been in those shoes. <laughs> but anyway, and then I want to say also congratulations to, to Barb Thomas, who's taking over for you. She'll do a wonderful job also. You can see her leadership already and what she's done on these Zoom meetings and things like that. So with that said, I, I uh, wanted to uh, introduce uh, some uh, people that already have been introduced by themselves. And actually, uh, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but uh, what I want to explain is what we're uh, awarding today. And that's the, uh, the majority or the major donor. I get that confused once in a while, but it's a major donor. And what that means is if you start out with a Paul Harris fellow, and then you advance to the Paul Harris Society, which means you've given a thousand a year for a number of years, when you get to the a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars and more, you become a, a member of the major donor club. And that's what we're going to award today to three of our fellow Rotarians here in our club. So I've asked uh, uh, some people to come and 
Help me with this okay. because it, it's very important. But before I do that, I want to show you what, what they'll be getting, and that's a nice pin. Uh, it's a diamond studded pin, and they'll wear that really beautifully on their lapel. And then for their office or their home is a nice tool with their name engraved on it. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and if you set that on your shelf, it be inspiration. So that's that's what's going to be presented. And to do the, those honors, I'm going to introduce to you Jackie Andrews, who has already been introduced. She's past district governor, and she's also on the foundation committee. And uh, she's very active in the district and, and does a fine job of promoting the foundation. So I've asked her to come. Also, Bill Colner, and he is a member, of course, of the uh, West Liberty Club for many, many years, and uh, he's also a member of the Foundation Committee and has worked tirelessly in promoting uh, the, the Foundation. And last but not least is uh, Chris Knapp, and he was past district governor, and he's also from the AM Club here in Iowa City. So uh, Chris will end it up, and, and uh, he'll present and then we'll, we'll hear a few words from our recipients. And so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Jackie. Jackie, would you take over? Take over. Jackie, mm -hmm. you can see you're muted for a second there. Yeah, perfect. All right, I'm happy to um, take over from you, Vern. You're, you're a great Rotarian and, and you're such a great um, district, or foundation chair for your Iowa City Club. So I appreciate being um, handed, handed this opportunity by you. It's an extraordinary opportunity to salute a major donor as it represents cumulative commitment and dedication to the Rotary Foundation to achieve this level. Just a little information, there are currently 118 major donors in our district. And today we are recognizing three in your club. You know, this is a fitting finale, uh, the last of more than a dozen uh, that we've done in June that Bill Colner and I have planned uh, for the foundation team with, um, with Chris. And it's, it's fitting because this is, a, I think the first one we started to organize way back in January. And because of um, various obstacles and then not meeting and so forth, we're now finally able to present um, one, two of these uh, major donors. The first two are very special to me as the recipients are past district governor Ray Mustin and Linda Mustin, who have walked among you for many years, Ray joining this club in 1975 and Linda in 1987, when women were first admitted, and that's to her credit. This event is uniquely special as PDG Ray and Linda were the district's leaders when I was president in 1999-2000. And among other aspects of Rotary, we shared a commitment to youth and empowering young people to take up the motto of the Rotary Foundation, to do good in the world. In 2000, Ray led a District 6000 polio immunization trip to India and advocated for youth participation on that team. He invited me to work together with him, uh, jumping through many hoops uh, to enable two outstanding interactors to, uh, from Jefferson to participate. What a life-changing experience for those young people to see firsthand the good being done in the world by the Rotary Foundation, fueled by Rotarians like Ray and Linda. I thank you for the lasting impact you have made through these gifts. Ray and Linda have also distinguished themselves as caring and thoughtful leaders who were instrumental in forming the Cotepec project and continue today to ensure youth participation and growth through that experience. It's indeed a great honor and privilege to present Ray and Linda with this personalized major donor crystal and pin and pendant in deep appreciation for their belief, 
in the Rotary Foundation, how it touches our hearts and the impact that it can make on our communities and around the world. It is, in, it is now my pleasure to introduce uh, District Rotary Foundation Fundraising Chair, Bill Colner of the Rotary Club of West Liberty, who will make the next presentation. This is a, a really a wonderful opportunity because uh, this is our last one for uh, in a three week time frame. And uh, as I told Jackie earlier today, it's really fitting because two of these people have touched our lives so dearly. The opportunity to be with the Mustons virtually for this acknowledgement of their major donor achievement is also special for me. In 1999, uh, Governor Ray Mustin came to West Liberty for the Rotary Club of West Liberty's 75th anniversary. At that time, I received my first Paul Harris Fellow. And it was an extremely inspiring opportunity because Ray Mustin spoke from his heart that night about the Rotary Foundation and what it means to him and what it means to uh, the District 6000 and to the world. I've been touched so much that 107 Paul Harris Fellows later, and I'm still giving, is driven by the person, Ray Mustin, who has really caused me to be who I am today. The people who make Rotary so effective through their generosity and passion for positive change come from all over the world and all walks of life. Even so, they share a powerful common trait they're compelled by a desire to share their good fortune with others simply because they can make a positive impact for someone whose life is not as easy as theirs. Giving works because Rotary works. The Rotary work and Rotary works because of people like you, Ray and Linda, and Dr. Peter Wallace. Rotarians of Iowa City Club, you are a giving club averaging more than $138 per capita every year. There are 17 Paul Harris Society eligible donors in your club giving more than $1,000 every year. And there are 17 major donors out of the 118 major donors in District 6000 in your club. Today it is an honor and a special presentation to Dr. Peter Wallace for achieving major, major donor number level one in 2020. Peter joined this club in 1976, served as club president in 1986 and 87. He led the initial Polio Plus campaign and inducted the first two women into your club. He also conducted the second Polio Plus campaign in 2005. Peter also has been the chair of your local grants committee for 23 years. Remarkable and wonderful. Peter, your belief in the work of the Rotary Foundation marks you as a leader, and displays your commitment to making a positive, lasting change and impact in your community and around the world. For that, we thank you. Fellow Rotarians, when we think about the Rotary Foundation, we can have the image of Ray and Linda Mustin and Dr. Peter Wallace in our hearts. They not only gave of their treasures, but they also gave of their time and their talents. Peter, we sincerely thank you for your confidence and trust in the Rotary Foundation through your generous gifts, as you have earned that, the distinction of major donor. While you think of Dr. Peter Wallace and Ray and Linda Mustin, think of these people on the soil of foreign lands, helping people in the Cotopec and in Iowa most for many years. I well remember when Ray Mustin spoke of the Cotopec early in my career in Rotary. With tears in his eyes, he shared the difference that each of us were going to make in young children in Ecotopan. Will each of you join Jacqueline, Andrew, and myself, standing on admiration and appreciation of Ray, Linda, and Dr. Wallace? Chris Snap. Thank you very much, Bill and Jackie. Um, my comments I'll keep very brief. Uh, the challenge that we face in, in the world is meeting the needs of those who have 
of less fortunate life than those of us like here in Iowa City or here in the United States or, or in other parts of, of what we call first world countries. And what we have been able to accomplish with people like Ray and Linda Mustin and Pete Wallace and other people in our district and, and other Rotarians around the world are Rotarians who have taken the journey of giving to the foundation, taking that one step at a time, be it through quarterly um, giving to the foundation of $25 and over a period of time becoming a Paul Harris Fellow. And if you have the ability to be um, giving at the higher level of the Paul Harris Society. But it's a journey and, and it's a commitment. And oftentimes it should be a commitment of a family uh, approach of spouses sharing and participating and, and being engaged in what we are trying to do, which is the mission of making the world a better place through a project, through a grant, through an opportunity to um, lift up other people and to meet their needs where they are. So I encourage everyone in our district and in the Rotary Club of Iowa City to follow and emulate what the Mustons um, and what Pete Wallace and so many other members of your club have done and become Paul Harris uh, fellows, join the Paul Harris Society, become a major donor, become a benefactor and give generously so that we can do more in the world than we have done today. So again, as Bill and Jackie and everybody has already done, please again, thank uh, Pete Wallace and the Mustons for being so generous with their gifts. Thank you uh, uh, all, Jackie, Chris, Bill, and Vern. Uh, I'd like to just uh, offer the opportunity for Ray, Linda, and Dr. Wallace to say a few words. Would any of you like to say a few words? Can you hear us now? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, well, we've been a Rotary family since 1975. I could say use the the chat button and say how many of you were born since 1975. Uh, but uh, our our experience in Rotary has grown. Uh, remembering 1982 Dallas International Convention. Remember the. What happened there? <laughs> well, in 1982 at the, at the International Convention, I had the privilege of casting five ballots for the Rotary Club of Iowa City in opposition to white only clauses in Rotary International. And that was a major milestone. From the floor, another candidate stood up and asked to be recognized and say we should also rule out gender as a qualification. So it's very special to me that Linda joined me that year and as the first president of the Iowa City New Rotary Club. Female. <laughs> that's all that counts. Gotcha. Um, again, I was lucky to be a Rotarian in, starting in 1987 and we attended the Melbourne uh, conference the year that I was president and everything had changed. Uh, the uh, participation of women, uh, the uh, the general tenor had grown. So we have been very fortunate to grow up in with the Rotary family, um, all the people that have spoken today, and um, all of you who were born or not born then. And we're very touched by the comments that have all been shared by our mentors, Jackie and Bill, who have carried us through since 19. 75 and kept us alive but i just want to add one thought why this is so special for us because the rotary foundation has enabled and supported us as we've done the work that we've done over the years but especially given us the opportunity to involve our children our grandchildren and many other children of Iowa and around the world in, in serving the needs of others. And what's not commonly known is we've been involved in supporting individual children, orphanage, and schools in India, in Africa, in Guatemala, and Mexico, and even involved in trying to assist children in the Iowa City community. So it's a very special symbolic uh, award on our part because it means so much for what you all have done as a club 
to follow that same journey. So we're grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Ray and Linda, and, and congratulations on this recognition. Uh, Dr. Wallace, would you like to say a few words? Thanks, Jim. A wiser man than I am once said, each of us is warmed by fires we did not build, drink from wells we did not dig, and sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. Think about this relative to what the Rotary Foundation does, but not just for today, but how our support of it today affects the world tomorrow. Thank you. This is Vern again. Uh, I'm going to just say a few words uh, of congratulations to both all three of you, uh, Pete and uh, Ray and Linda. You've said this well. You made my job a lot easier as the chairman of the foundation here for, for our club uh, because it promotes the foundation giving and that is really important. And I uh, also want to thank Jackie and Bill and uh, Chris for their elegant words and I couldn't have said it near as well as they did and so I really appreciate you coming down and taking your time and one thing about it you didn't have to drive at least <laughs> so this was good and uh, we thank Jim and uh, Barb for helping us with our zoom I think it went off really well and uh, I'm going to turn it back to Jim thank you Wonderful. Thank you, Vern. Uh, also, thanks, Jackie, Chris, and Bill, and congratulations again to the Muslims and Dr. Wallace. Uh, next, uh, in our meeting, one of our favorite parts of these meetings, when uh, we uh, decided or were, had it, uh, I guess, uh, uh, such that we, we couldn't meet in person, we decided to add an agenda item that we've been calling uh, the Rotary Moment of Positivity and Gratitude. Uh, we think it works well during these Zoom meetings and as always kind of an uplifting moment. Uh, today, our Rotary Moment of Positivity and Gratitude is going to be presented by Ann Parker. Ann? Great. Thanks, Jim. I want to just quickly say congratulations to Linda and Ray and Pete. Uh, you guys are some of my very favorite Rotarians and personal mentors to me and wonder of ex wonderful examples for all of us to follow in service above self. So that kind of, kind of leads into what uh, I thought I'd share with you today. You know, we've, we've experienced just a crazy upside down time these past few months. I think we're all starting to get a little antsy and to get back to some semblance of order. Who knew ringing in 2020 six months ago would be such a significant year to remember, or maybe we don't want to remember it. You know, our, in the last two months, our home computer has crashed. So if anybody's tried to send me emails, uh, not happening. Um, our sump pump has died twice, go figure, all the rains that we've had. You know, just those, those silly things that you stumble over and that you work around and what have you. We've all had to make changes, some good, some not so good, some definitely for the better, and some a real challenge to take us out of our comfort zones. A friend of mine recently suggested in jest that we should all celebrate at midnight on June 30th to start the second half of the year on July 1st with a sort of do-over. Let's finish up the year strong because these first six months have really been something else. I think there might be something to this. We're all ready for this and whatever this is to be over. We're ready to have the freedom to go places and do things and not worry about someone sneezing on us or who touched that door handle last or is my job going to be intact next week? Can I pay my bills? What's the stock market doing to my retirement fund? When will I get to see my elderly parents? Are my grandchildren being safe? How are my neighbors coping? And when all things really be equal for all in this country without the violence and destruction and the tearing down of others. One of the things that I admire about Rotarians is truly their service above self. And Rotary is all about world peace and understanding, which fits right in with these current times. Sure, service above self is our motto, but did you know that when you joined that, did you know that when you joined Rotary? I am fortunate to chair the orientation committee, and we have a great group of Rotarians that provides one of the steps in the membership process. It's one of the first steps of engagement into our club. 
we get to talk about all kinds of things um, related to Rotary. Our youth programs and scholarships and opportunities to study abroad. You know, we awarded our second scholarship through the Rotarian Supporting Women this year. And that's exciting to provide an opportunity to a young woman in our community to help her um, rise above and reach her goals. This week, 26 students from our area are virtually attending the World Affairs program. And our club sponsored 11 of those individuals. Wow, that's amazing. We talk about the foundation, dollars large and small pooled together to provide opportunities to continue our good work. Rotary is international, remember? The programs our club has started that have become district-wide, such as FAMSCO, Iowa Most, Dakota Pack, the Ponsetti Project, providing good things for others across the globe. It feels good to do something for others, and you are doing it. The I Can Read program has blossomed due to your support. The Rotary, Mac or the, excuse me, the Ronald McDonald golf outing has raised nearly a million dollars for our local Ronald McDonald house, despite the fact that we weren't able to physically get on the course this year. But what gratitude those families have to know that they will have a roof over their heads and food to eat during these tough times while they're here in Iowa City. Did you know what our club, did you know that our club provided a local grant of $500 for a much needed printer to help a nonprofit to support our community and continue the work for our neighbors in need? We've planted trees and provided bike racks and cleaned up parks. You are doing this. Rotarians are doers. They truly make the world a better place. So pat yourselves on the back. And the Heart Safe initiative that we started this year to not only learn CPR and be certified because you just never know when you may be needed, but providing defibrillators all across the community. So just in case, it's a peace of mind that Rotarians share with our communities. As the largest non-religious, non-political service club in the world, we help our neighbors to be the best that we can be together. We lift each other up in times of need. We try not to judge and we respect each other. Unfortunately, the year-long planned trip to Hikotapec had to be canceled nine days before Rotarians and the many student groups were headed to Mexico. I know this is a disappointment for everyone. And just for the record, this is on my bucket list to be able to go and see the Rotary, the library that we all started. So mark my words, I am going one of these days. Um, but you know, the strong relationships that we have built with the Rotary Club there and the community they were able to take the ball and complete some of those projects that we had planned to do, such as a new roof on part of the school building, construction of bus stops for the safety of the kids, and replacing toilets. My goodness, things that we probably just take for granted here. On the other hand, the Iowa Most trip did get to go to Weiwei Tanango. They provided health care for 177 families, including 53 cataract surgeries. Wow discovering a need and making a difference. That's what we do as Rotarians, and you do this. I could talk all afternoon about Rotary and the wonderful things each one of us does with our Rotary hats on. That is one of the things I love about Rotarians, service above self. But you know, we really never take those hats off. Not only are you Rotarians, but you serve in many ways. You lend a hand when someone asks, you sit on boards to provide guidance, you volunteer your time for those things you are passionate about. You make a difference, lending resources and knowledge to make the world a better place. We have new members joining us every month. They are enthusiastic and excited to join our club. They are doers, and they certainly provide service above self to their families, their communities, and to the world. Our club has pivoted quickly to be able to continue our weekly meetings. I think we've all learned a little something about electronic conferencing and making connections. This could be the start of something new and better attendance, quite frankly, for all of us, myself included. Um, how easy is it to jump on quick if you're traveling or let's say you're stuck at home or at the office because even if we could meet in person, we just couldn't get out the door on time. And I will be the first one to say that I am guilty of that. We've kept up with programs and projects. Our communities work, our committees work quietly behind the scenes, 
like the Energizer Bunny or the Timex watch that takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Our rotary year, despite the changes, is ending on a high note. So I guess what I'm trying to say as we wrap up this rotary year and begin the next, let's celebrate the good things we have done together. Lots of pats on the back and high fives for all of our members. Let's look to the next six months because we have an opportunity and quite frankly, I think an obligation as Rotarians to continue to set a good example as the world takes on a new view, whether from the effects of COVID or the social injustices that are happening or the new routines that we're all facing. I truly believe that there is a silver lining somewhere in all of this. As my niece would say, find that unexpected joy. Sometimes it's hard to see amongst the sadness and anxiety and the unknowns. Let's ring in the new year and make the most of these next six months. Let's find that silver lining together. Be grateful for the work that we are doing together to make the world a better place, not only through Rotary, but in your places of employment, your neighborhoods, and your communities. We have our work cut out for us, but look back on this Rotary year and know that you have done good things. Despite the obstacles and the upside downness of our world, you have made a difference, and I hope you are proud to be Rotarians. I sure am. Happy New Year. <laughs> wow, Anne, wonderful. Well, a great job, and thanks so much. Uh, we couldn't have picked a better uh, rotary moment of positivity and gratitude for this last meeting of the fiscal year than that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And I have to excuse myself. I'm, I need to be on another call. So congratulations, Jim, to you for your spectacular year. And Barb, I look forward to working with you this next year. It's going to be a good one. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate it. Well, next, I'd like to open the floor to Rotary-related announcements. I'd like to begin uh, with Trish Smith. Uh, Trish, or if you are on, I'd like to hear uh, an update from the United Way, particularly how Rotary has partnered with United Way during these uh, difficult times and what we can continue to do to work together with United Way as Rotarians. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, again, just it's just an honor to not only serve all of you as a United Way individual, but also as a fellow Rotarian. And we've had so much fun um, with our initial partnership that we did with our food deliveries, you know, delivering over 600 meals to local, you know, emergency workers, medical workers, as well as our neighbors who are finding themselves in very unexpected need right now through the Iowa City Free Lunch Program and Shelter House. We've had some several conversations um, with Barb and uh, through channels of the board on additional opportunities that we could partner in for the better of our community and to again, fulfill that mission of Rotary of Service Above Self. And so we're looking forward to exploring some new opportunities there. Um, and in addition to that, I definitely wanted to make a big announcement today. First of all, if you've not already considered every time you leave your house, make sure you have a mask in your hand. Um, I know you all have been privy to what's happening right now in our immediate community with the raises in cases of COVID, um, but we just want to remind you that keeping your mask on is your best way not only to protect yourself, but everyone that you love or come encounter with. We are continuing our mask up program. Uh, we do have masks that are being made. Um, we are looking to project that we'll be bringing in over 2,000 made masks thanks to a partnership with the Community Foundation of Johnson County and a great donor there who provided all of the materials. United Way provided all the logistics and lo and behold, we're gonna be able to help out not only agencies in the community, but other entities like the library. Um, the Iowa City Library reached out to us for help with that. So if you're interested in making masks or you have an organization that needs PPE support, please let us know. The other huge announcement that I wanna to make today is that I teased you last time to let you know that our campaign co-chairs are out there for next year. And I am so excited to say they are two of our very own Rotarians. So I am pleased to announce that Anna Moyer Stone and Ryan Bell will be taking on the co-chair role for United Way this year. Our United campaign is one that is always significant to all of our community partners but this year even more so. We are being asked to do things we've never done before and we wanna make sure we can step up to those challenges and make sure that everyone, including those who never thought they would be in a position to utilize services in our community can remain safe. 
So please welcome me in welcoming them to their new position. And Ryan and Anna, if you're on, I'd welcome you to pop open your mics and just say one or two things real briefly to keep this movie moving. Hey, Ryan here, excited to serve and lead this charge into the new dimension. <laughs> I'm not sure if Anna's on, but we'll just say they both are about as fun as it gets when it comes to campaign co-chairs. And this year we're going to need to smile a little as well as work really hard. So I can't wait to share what they've got planned with all of you and we'll keep you up to date. But again, thank you so much for all of your dedication to this Rotary Club and the amazing things we're going to do together for our community. Jim, I'll give it back to you. All right. Thank you, Tricia. Our club's so proud of our partnership with the United Way. Uh, first, thank you for being a Rotarian. All right, am I uh, off mute now? Barb, can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. All right, wonderful. Thanks again, Trish. All right, uh, Barb, are there any other, or Devin, are there any other uh, Rotary related announcements? Uh, I do not see any other hands raised at all. Okay, so great. Well, I was just going to add uh, for Trish, you know, as a, a past United Way campaign uh, chair, uh, I agree that smiles are one of the primary criteria you need as a campaign chair, and especially in this time. And uh, wow, did you pick the right folks with Ryan and Anna. So uh, excited to see all uh, of the developments for United Way in the coming year. Uh, well, moving on, I'd just like to uh, move into the next part of our program here, which is where we typically have a presentation. Uh, this year, or this week, of course, being the uh, conclusion of my term as presidency, I'm very excited to say a, a few words and excited to pass the uh, gavel on to Barb. Uh, looking back almost 11 years for me when I moved to this area, uh, I uh, didn't know very many people, but uh, those that I did know, uh, I asked for uh, recommendations for a, uh, a very trustworthy and respected realtor in the area. And the theme uh, and the consistent answer that kept coming back was, well, you should uh, work with Vern Folkman. So I did, and Vern helped me find my first home in this area. And as we closed on that home, Vern said to me, uh, you know, as a banker, are you interested in being involved in the community? And of course, I said, I'd love to. And uh, of course, I'd like to look for the, the best opportunities to do that. And it will come as no surprise to anyone on this call that Vern uh, then brought me to a meeting of the Iowa City Union Rotary Club as his guest. And uh, the rest is history. And boy, do I appreciate Vern uh, bringing me as a guest and bringing the dozens of others of us to Rotary Club meetings as Vern has. Vern's, uh, we often tease Vern's during our, Vern during our meetings for all the guests that he brings. But uh, if we were meeting live, I'd ask for a show of hands for all the folks that uh, Vern brought as a guest, and I'm sure there are, are, are many. But uh, I have, uh, it's been my honor and my privilege to serve as your club president for the past year. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, it's brought about some uh, very unique challenges as uh, we've uh, discussed, but that is the past. And uh, I'd like to now uh, talk about some of the, the, the fun things. Um, first of all, one of the goals for our Rotary Club this year was to grow Rotary well. Um, the, what I meant by that and what we discussed during my first meeting was that uh, we've had a trend, as has Rotary International uh, as a larger group, of a declining enrollment in our club. Uh, at our peak, we were between 330 and 340 members. Uh, we began this year with 300 members, and uh, there typically is some attrition that occurs during the beginning of a fiscal year as dues become due and folks move out of the area for various reasons, as happens in Johnson County. Um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we are, as of today, up to officially 294 members. So while we were not exactly successful in growing Rotary, I would have loved to have ended up with 301 or more members if we could. I'm still proud that we were able to reach this 294 figure and look forward to working with Barb to see if we can get back over 300 in the next fiscal year. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, club finances. Uh, we are in a strong position in the coming years to make things happen as a club. And uh, this year, uh, every year, we work with a budget in our club. And um, obviously, with the challenges that we've faced 
with just meeting together and doing things at all uh, in the past year, that's been very difficult. But uh, one of the positives or silver linings, as Ann uh, told us uh, to look for in this situation, is that uh, a lot of the things that uh, typically cost us money, like setup fees for meetings, uh, extra meals for guests, uh, we've saved a lot of many, many dollars over the past few months. Uh, it's to the point where our year ended up uh, positive by over $10,000. And, you know, typically for your personal finances, you'd think, wow, that's wonderful. You know, unfortunately this year, the reason that we ended up so high in net profit for our club was because we weren't able to do as much. So what's the silver lining in that? It's that we are now positioned to really do some great things in coming years. So I'm excited uh, as uh, I'll be able to continue on as the board, uh, on the board and to work with Barb and the rest of the board and uh, others as well as we come up with ideas to put that money to work. A couple of the things that I'm very excited about uh, are new ways to attract and engage new members. I think there's some things that some dollars could help us with to grow our club. And I'm also excited about working with uh, some maybe new grants and new projects. Uh, things that uh, we can seek out as opportunities to put that those extra dollars to work. So um, there's some exciting times ahead. Uh, I mentioned Vern Folkman before, and uh, uh, I'm going to copy an idea of his next. So Vern was the club president here in 2011 and 2012. And at Vern's last meeting as the club president, he handed out some outstanding service awards. I happen to have an example of what Vern handed out back in 2011 and 2012. And uh, at the end of Vern's presidency, he recognized several of our club members who had gone above and beyond the call of duty uh, to uh, help the club and to be active in the club during his year. And I just remember thinking that was a neat idea. Um, and it's uh, ever so important this year to recognize people. Obviously, we've discussed some unique challenges that we've had. Um, I would uh, say that we have that those challenges have been met with unique contributions from so many of our members that I'd like to recognize today. So today I'd like to give out a, a number of outstanding service awards to our Iowa City Noon Rotarians that have gone above and beyond the call of duty in the last year. Each of our uh, recipients of awards today will be receiving an hourglass. It looks like this. And on the front of the hourglass is the four-way test. If you remember back to a few weeks ago, our rotary moment of positivity and gratitude that was given by Gary Pesha uh, struck a chord with me, uh, and as it did with uh, many of you, I'm sure. But uh, the history of the four-way test is, is very interesting and very intriguing to us, of course, as uh, fellow Rotarians, dating all the way back to the 1930s. And uh, the, the Rotarian that wrote the four-way test was Herb Taylor, as Gary mentioned. Uh, Gary drafted the 24-word code back in the 1930s, and Rotary International adopted it as our four-way test in 1943. So those 24 words that we say at the conclusion of every meeting are very important to us in guiding us in all that we do as club members, and uh, serves as a uh, neat uh, focus, a focal point of our uh, outstanding service awards that our Rotarian club members are gonna be receiving today. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, present some of these awards. Um, and when I do, if uh, the recipient is on the call, uh, please feel free to uh, say a word or two following uh, the, the receipt of your work. The first is uh, that I'm very excited about uh, our orientation process as a club. For many of us, for all of us, that's our first induction into the club. And I would like to, uh, those are members that haven't been a part of the orientation process for quite some time uh, to just know that our orientation process at the Iowa City Noon Rotary Club is very professionally done. It's very well organized and it's a, 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 pro, a part of the, our process that I'm very proud of. And today I'd like to recognize Ann Parker uh, with an outstanding service award for her leadership of that orientation process. Now I know that Ann had to log off to attend another meeting, so we'll continue with our awards. Now, the second I'd like to uh, give out uh, is related to our programs. Our club has a long history of uh, exciting uh, programs. It's a big part of our meetings. I think uh, the quality of our programs and the variety of our programs drives our attendance and uh, it helps engage our members in uh, uh, coming to meetings, sitting side by side with uh, new Rotarians that maybe they haven't met before. Um, so I couldn't say enough about how important it is for us to have this longstanding tradition of outstanding programs. 
This year, our incoming or new program chair is Devin Von Holstein, and he's done an outstanding job both of reaching out to potential programs and getting them scheduled in an organized manner. So, Devin, congratulations and thank you for your efforts. And I look forward to presenting you the next time I see you with this outstanding service award. Devin, are you on? I'm here. Thanks for the opportunity to serve and to, to do a lot of fun stuff. And thanks to everybody who brings good program ideas. I just help coordinate some fun stuff. So thank you all. Very good, Devin, thank you. Uh, I'd also like to recognize our outgoing program chair. Uh, like I said, our club for many, many years has had outstanding programs, a wide variety of such and uh, a very high quality. And uh, this year is uh, Tom Selick's uh, final year as uh, being involved with the uh, leadership of our programs. So uh, I think I can hear Tom in the office next door. So he might actually have a customer in. <laughs> but if not, Tom, are you on the call? No, I don't think he is. He must, I think he had a customer that came in. So I'll, I'll recognize Tom after, after the meeting. Uh, next, um, one of our biggest events of the year of club, of course, um, unfortunately we couldn't have uh, this year, but we did last year and many years past is our joint service club luncheon. Outstanding event. I'm very proud that we host this event um, for our guests today. Our joint service club luncheon is a luncheon that's attended by all service club members all across Johnson County. And the speaker is the president of the University of Iowa. And we have uh, attendance is very high at that. We have the privilege of hosting it every year, but it takes a lot of organization. I'd like to recognize Anna Moyer Stone with an outstanding service award for her organization of this event. Anna, are you on? I'll thank Anna next time I see her and give her with her award. Uh, next award, uh, boy, I've mentioned Vern Folkman a few times, so people are gonna get tired of hearing me uh, mention Vern, but as you could see by today's uh, presentation, uh, that Rotary Foundation has been the for at the forefront of our club's operation for a long time. And many, many of our members have been uh, foundation donors for many years, and we're very proud, proud of that. And uh, Vern leads our foundation uh, with much pride, and he leads by example. Um, we had several of our members attend a foundation event uh, back in November in the Quad Cities. That's where I got to meet Bill Golner, for example. Uh, the speaker was Chris Knapp and uh, others, and it was a great event. But Vern, I want to recognize you with an Outstanding Service Award. Kind of seems fun for me since uh, my first was given to me by you. Uh, several years ago, but Vern, thanks for all you do, and uh, are you still on the call? I am, but I, I just want to say thank you. You're too kind, Jim. I don't deserve all that, but anyway, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you, Vern. Appreciate it. Uh, another one of the most important parts of our club is uh, the grants that we uh, receive, that we underwrite, and, uh, and fund. And it is a very uh, in-depth process, as you can imagine, because it involves uh, Rotary, both volunteerism and money. And our club's uh, leader of the grant process is Eric Weiler, who also happens to be our next president-elect. So uh, Eric, I'd like to recognize you for all of your contributions to our club and thank you for your work. Uh, Eric, are you on the, the call today? All right, Eric, so I'll give him his, his award next time I see him. Um, our next, uh, I'd like to recognize Linda Farkas. Uh, Ryla is uh, one of our outstanding uh, parts of our club. And of course, the Ryla is, is uh, something that uh, was affected by our coronavirus situation. But for many years, Linda has been a wonderful leader of our uh, Ryla um, organization. Linda, are you with us today? Okay. Um, next, a uh, couple times today, we've talked about the uh, Kerber Heart Safe Initiative. And Jim Merchant has uh, gone above and beyond. Uh, if you remember our meetings that we had in person from January, February, and March, uh, Jim uh, was up front many times uh, talking about the Kerber Heart Safe Initiative and how we as Rotarians could get involved. And uh, uh, that has been an outstanding uh, project for us. And we're proud of our partnership with uh, the Kerbers. Um, so I'd like to present Jim with an award. And uh, Jim, are you on? I don't think so. Not Jim, okay. Mm -hmm. um, next, uh, as we've alluded to today too, uh, we, our, our club has an exciting and fun partnership with United Way. We help to deliver a lot of meals uh, with United Way. Um, and uh, it's 
been uh, a, quite an effort that's uh, been very active since the coronavirus situation. But obviously, all these efforts take a lot of leadership and organization. I'd like to recognize Trish Smith uh, with an Outstanding Service Award for all you've done for our club. So, Trish, congratulations. Thank you, Jim, so much for that. We really appreciate it, and we're happy to continue that partnership. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move on to a couple of members recognized. I'm going to call it, some of them have done double duty for the club where they maybe serve in a couple of committees or do a couple of things. But the, my next recipient, it's like uh, quintuple duty. I couldn't think of all of the things that this uh, member has done this year, but here's a list of a few. Sergeant at Arms, author of an article about Rotary and why you should join Rotary that's been widely published and widely shared. Uh, one of our leading uh, guest uh, bringers, as a bringer of guests to our meetings, uh, leader of our uh, planting tree projects, uh, the person that helps us with some of our social media, and maybe you can help us with Facebook Live. I go on and on, but Ryan Bell, uh, first of all, congratulations on your role with United Way, but thank you for all you do for our club, Ryan. No problem, Jim. Thank you very much for the recognition. I appreciate it. You bet. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Uh, one of the uh, toughest jobs, the most work in the club, is club secretary. Uh, it's a position that doesn't often get up front on the podium and get a lot of recognition, but Sean McIntyre uh, does an incredible amount of work for our club, so I want to recognize uh, him today. So, uh, Sean, are you on? And if so, congratulations and thank you for all of your work. I am on. Thank you very much. It's uh, my pleasure to to serve this club and and I, I'm going to thank Vern again for bringing me to the first my first meeting and being my sponsor. So. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank, thanks again, Sean. I mean it about uh, all the work that you do. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, next is one of these examples of double duty. So uh, the Rotarian Supporting Women Committee was brought up today, and it's an exciting newer committee in the club that's doing great things. We're very proud of this committee. Um, Tara Manettos is one of our chairs for that committee, and Tara does double duty. She also takes notes uh, and is a part of our newsletter committee. So Tara is very active in our club. Tara, are you on the call today? And if so, congratulations and thank you for your work. Thank you very much. We have a great committee and a great club. Thanks. You bet. Uh, our uh, collection of dues and is a uh, important thing and uh, it takes organization. And uh, we decided a couple years ago to separate that duty from the treasurer's role because of how much time and work it takes. Uh, I'd like to recognize Steve Quigley for leading the collection of dues process and also for being past president. Steve was our president last year, uh, did so much to help me in my transition as president. But Steve, I'd like to recognize you. Uh, are you on the call, Steve? I am, Jim, and I, I thank you very much for that recognition. But uh, like Vern said as well, I, I don't deserve it, but it's been, it's been great. And I tell you, um, your leadership has been nothing short of spectacular. So thank you. And uh, I know our membership uh, due collection is in great hands with Melissa Henley taking over as well. So, but thank you for the recognition, Jim. Yes, thanks, Steve, for all you do. Appreciate it. Just a couple more here. Uh, our club treasurer is Neil Quellhorst. I'd like the club to know, you know, we'll be not, surpri not be surprised, but the finance of this club are handled in the most professional and organized way that I've ever seen for a service club. And that's attributable directly to Neil and his work. Uh, Neil, are you on? Don't think so. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, the I Can Read Literacy Project was brought up today by Ann Parker. Um, it's a wonderful program led by LaDonna Wick. LaDonna, are you on the call? I am, and thank you so much. We, our committee has the most fun, doing the most fun thing, giving literacy to children. It's great. Thanks. Thanks for all your work. An important project. Uh, two more. One I'd like to call uh, the Institutional Memory and Mentorship Award. I think uh, uh, our club is fortunate to have several of our members that uh, whose experience uh, reaches back several years. Um, one of those members who's reached out to me at a number of times to help me with various parts of uh, what uh, I've needed, and also someone that's uh, been uh, at the on the end of the phone when I need to have information or quick advice is Gary Pesha. Uh, Gary, if you were on, I'd like to just thank you for your mentorship and leadership and for your institutional memory that you offer to all of us and for your friendship, Gary. Uh, if you're on, um, congratulations and thanks for your uh, mentorship. Thank you, Jim. I, uh, I, I appreciate your comments and 
congratulations on a great year. Uh, Rotary is very special to me, and, and you, uh, you've done a good job leading the club. Thank you so much for this recognition. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I've saved the, uh, uh, I don't want to say best for last, because all these are wonderful and best, but uh, the last award that I've got is for our president-elect, Barb Thomas. And uh, I, all I need to say is that uh, the club is in wonderful hands. Uh, I've been consistently impressed, if not amazed, with uh, Barb's uh, energy, passion, and organization as she gets geared up for her term as president. And uh, Barb has spent uh, countless hours in preparations, both at the committee level, the budget level, uh, with the pets training, uh, the transition into Zoom uh, for the, the next uh, Zoom meetings for the next uh, meeting of the next year. Um, everyone in the club has a lot to look forward to under Barb's leadership. So, uh, Barb, I'd like to first uh, recognize you with this outstanding leadership award. We're excited, excited to work with you as uh, your past president uh, for the next year. Thank you very much, Jim. It's been a pleasure. All right. Well, I know we're short on time, so I'm just going to conclude by saying that Barb and I are going to participate in a District 6000 Passing of the Gavel virtual event tomorrow at 430. So I don't know, Barb, if this is the official time where I pass you the gavel or tomorrow is the time where I pass you the gavel. Maybe we'll just do it twice. But uh, very excited to uh, pass the gavel to you and to uh, be past president and serve on your board during your term. Another item that uh, I also am um, excited to give you is this uh, pendant. And this uh, pendant uh, hands down each year from uh, each of our Rotary Club presidents. And the back of the pendant says, um, President's Pin, Rotary Club of Iowa City, chartered 1923. Pin owned by Alan W. Dakin, 1905 to 1992. And uh, I, did, I do know that uh, Alan Dakin served as vice president of Rotary International in 1953 and 54. Uh, he's an Iowa City Noon Rotarian. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, it's the highest um, position any Iowa City Noon Rotarian has had with Rotary International. So his pin is attached to this pendant. I'll pass it to you, Barb. And if you uh, can wear it proudly from time to time during meetings, uh, that would be meaningful. So uh, Barb, again, as I said, excited to work with you, excited to pass the gavel to you. Do you have a gavel there? I do, as a matter of All fact, right. everyone. There you go. I'll turn so it over I, to you. I've actually been given this by our district governor, Erna, who has sent all of the president-elects a uh, small gavel so that we have it for that virtual gavel passing, which is tomorrow evening. So we're kind of short on time. So I just want to say a few very quick things. We really appreciate everything that Jim Conard has done. And we've actually provided Jim with a couple of gifts of our gratitude to kind of show him how much we appreciate what he's done. So Jim, if you want to take a second, I don't know if you want to see, there's a lovely clock with an engraving. And in addition, even though he has not had to wear a lot of ties these days in these <laughs> COVID days, we did get him a rotary tie, very subtle and tasteful, just like Jim Connor. So before we close, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that, um, prob that one, we will not have a meeting on July 2nd. So our next meeting will be on Thursday, July 9th. And at that meeting, I'll have a few comments for you to kind of gear you up for the year that you're going to have with me as your president, because it is truly my honor to serve as your president. But in addition, I want you to watch your email inboxes. So we have created a survey, and the survey is about your comfort in returning to in-person meetings. We want you to kind of give us your feedback. So um, I will probably send that to you tomorrow. Please fill it out if you can by July 10th, and that will help us inform our decisions for meeting soon. So just know that one of the most important things for us is the safety of our members and your comfort in meeting. And so the survey will provide us with a lot of information. But then in addition, we are also exploring how we can use technology so that when we do meet in person, that we are able to live stream and record the meetings. 
That way, if there are people who are not comfortable meeting in person, they're able to do so. And they're able to participate as much as possible. So it's gonna be a great year. I'm gonna need all of you to kind of come together and help us do great things. Join us on July 9th. And if there is no other business before the club, I please invite you to join me in the four-way test. I'm gonna share my screen, so hold on. As just a reminder of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build good Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And with that, I end this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, Barb. Good luck, Barb. Thanks, Bernie. I have a comment for you, uh, Barb, if you have time, give me a call. I, I, Chet, this is old Chet. Okay. Uh, I, but, uh, I have a service above self uh, a moment for you. Okay. I'm, I'm gone. Uh, I'm going to sign off. Okay, great. I'll call you later today. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.